Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a totally different topic than I normally talk about. We are going to talk about some issues that I am passionate about and a topic that I'm passionate about. Today we're going to talk about why you should hire a mom. The five tips that I would give any mom heading back to work. You're not going to want to miss this video. It's going to be good. Here we go. A typical day in the life of a mom is so very busy. In fact, when I take a sick day or I am not feeling good, the amount of stuff that I still accomplish in that day is amazing. Nobody else does that. Everybody just lays on the couch or lays in bed all day, but a mom still gets like three loads of laundry done, organizes a calendar, schedules an event, makes some food for the family, still happening, and nobody thinks anything of it. So what we need to do is think about how these skills now translate into the new job that you're looking for. And let me tell you, they do translate. So first let's start with a story, a story uh, of a typical mom on a day. So you wake up early, depends you know, what age your kids are because everything adjusts as your kids get older, of course, but let's just say you're typically getting up early. Most of the time for moms, if they can have a few minutes of peace and quiet and have some coffee before the troops get up are always good. But the amount of tasks that women accomplish before 8 a.m. is amazing. I used to think like when I started going back to work, I used to be like, this is so much easier, number one. <laughs> and number two, like if I didn't have all of these kids and all of their requests and all of their needs coming at me constantly, I think I could run the world by 10 a.m. I think that I could get all of the job tasks that I have to do for this position done by 10 a.m. But, you know, maybe that's just me. Let me know what your experience has been. But a story of a typical mom is going to be getting up around 6 o'clock, maybe having some coffee, getting the kids up, getting them dressed, getting them fed, getting their lunch packed, uh, running around, finding the thing that they don't have for school today. Oh, you didn't sign this and you got to fill out this permission slip and you got to get this money and oh mom, can you call this person and can you make sure that this happens? And da -da 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 <laughs> it's not even 730 people. Okay. Then somehow we get everybody into the car, somebody gets sick or somebody has a fight in the back or, you know, and then you finally get them to school and, you know, somebody's having a problem or somebody's nervous about something that's coming up. And so you have to talk them through it. Uh, then you get them to school and then somehow that time between like nine and three o'clock goes so fast. <laughs> or maybe you don't have them all in school and you're carrying around a child in the freezing cold, uh, going to the grocery store and it just is the amount of clothes you have to put on and the diapers and the nursing and da, 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 and all the things that happen. We all know, all mothers know, but for all of you that are not mothers and are watching, this is for you. Okay. This is every single day. This is not just Monday through Friday, it's Saturday and Sunday and when you're sick and public holidays and when you go on vacation. Who is making the food on vacation? Who is doing everything on a vacation? Okay, so there's my rant about mothers, but this is very important for you to know. What we need to do is realize that all of these skills that we have learned and just become an expert at uh, when we are raising our kids are real skills for the workplace and women need to know how to communicate those skills better. So in 2022, I did some research on what are the top skills that all organizations are hiring for coming in 2023. So here is the list that I came, I looked at lots of different things. Um, and this is generally what I'm finding consistently, no matter what kind of position you're in that they're looking for. Somebody that has good time management skills, communication skills, adaptability, emotional intelligence, creative thinking, self-management, problem solving, collaborative, teamwork. Are you kidding me? Like this is what moms do every single day. And not only do they do it every single day, they do it with very small humans that are not logical and are not very good at making decisions. And so your strategies to communicate and get something done and accomplish a task and get the child to learn a skill or to learn a lesson and to be the person that you would want them to be as an adult is a huge skill. Let me just tell you, like you're going to have a variety of people on your team at work and the people that you work with or the people that you manage are going to be all unique. But let me tell you, 
they're not as hard as a toddler. Okay, so if you can get a toddler from point A to point B, you can accomplish a lot with your team. And so the best teams in the research shows, like Google team, people that work at Google, like they're saying that their best teams are all the people that have the good emotional intelligence, that know how to relate to people and to say, understand that they're different than them, that they're at this particular spot in life and how to manage that and how to get them to be uh, happy employees and uh, good team members. And so there's just so many skills. My point is this, there's so many skills as a mom that you have and that you need to learn to communicate this um, in getting your first job after having kids and just kind of like the mental process that everybody goes through. So today I'm gonna to highlight five tips for you uh, in going back into the workplace after raising your kids. The number one tip that I'm gonna give you, and if you haven't kind of got that already on this video, is that you have skills that are marketable, that you've learned over the five years, the 10 years, however you spent raising your children, the skills that you've learned over that time period is applicable for any job that you're applying for. This is not something you apologize for. This is not something that you feel embarrassed about. No, no, no. These are skills that you need to put on your actual CV, your resume, and not be embarrassed about it, not try to hide it, not try to, you know, talk like it's, oh, you know, this isn't exactly related to the position or, you know, I haven't been, you know, teaching this whole time or I haven't been in management. No, you have, it just looks different. Number two, you need to learn how to communicate the skills that you have learned raising your children onto your resume or CV. So I have created a free resource. I'll link it in the description below. This is just out there for moms. This is out there for moms is saying, okay, so what I did is I took all of those skills that I talked about earlier in the video that, you know, that uh, companies are hiring for communication, teamwork, agility, adaptability like that. And then how to translate your mom skills into bullet points that you can put on your resume. So that's what that free resource is. If that's helpful to you, I recommend looking at it because if anything, it just sparks ideas. If those particular bullet points don't work, at least gives you some idea of how to be thinking about your skills. And so a lot of times when you go back to work, you'll also find that there's not a lot of moms there or people, you know, so they don't understand that lifestyle, but don't apologize for it and just say, no, actually I have done this for, I have done this task for 10 years. The amount of organizing and adjusting the organization and adjusting schedules, or like you have a schedule of all these things coming in and there's needs to be, I mean, you're amazing at it. And we just need to learn how to communicate that. And number three, don't apologize in the interview for taking time off in that position. And I kind of mentioned that before, but I just really, really want to emphasize this for you is just don't apologize. Just be like, actually, uh, you know, in, in the business world, when people are going to learn new things, they're going to go off into a retreat or a weekend or something. And so yours has just been years of you being on a retreat and learning in very tough environments, very unique things where things are thrown at you and you have no training for, no practice, and you're on the spot and you're the only one that can respond. Like, don't apologize in the view, just be aggressive and just change the conversation. We need to be changing the conversation about how people look at it. Now, I currently am an American living in New Zealand and New Zealand is run by a woman and women all work here and it's, and it's, and they're very, jobs are very flexible with, you know, with you, with your kids and picking them up from school and that, that sort of thing. And so that's really great. And so I've seen an environment where it's embraced, where you can, you know, be a mom and a working mother without burning out. Uh, it, we're not superheroes. We're close, but we're <laughs> superheroes. And so like, you need to be able to do what you want to do without burning out and, you know, valuing the things that are important to you. Number four, and I need you ladies to listen up very, very carefully. Number four, the only, this is from somebody with experience and who has a lot of ambition. Number four, listen up. The only way that you will not burn out going back to work, okay, because the reality is your family, you know, they'll like, oh, sure, we'll help out. Nobody lets go of it. Nobody lets go of the mental load. That's a whole nother topic for another video. Nobody lets go of it. So you still have the mental load. The only way that you will not burn out is if you are very clear 
on what you value and adjust for that in the new position. I'm telling you ladies, we need to change the conversation. We need to be having these. We need to be not afraid to say it. Let me give you some examples. If you value picking up your kids from school, that needs to be discussed with your employer after you got the job, of course, like we're not done. Um, this is important to me. This needs to work into my schedule. Can I be done at three? I can go pick them up and then I'll finish the day uh, from home, uh, something like that, or whatever it is. Maybe you don't care about that. Maybe it's, I don't want to miss a sporting event, or maybe it's, I want to take my kids to school. I want them to have a certain type of, this is what I value. I want to be home and not exhausted to be able to cook dinner because I love cooking. You know, whatever it is, everybody's different, but like, What's gonna happen, <laughs> let me tell you, as I've talked to a lot of moms and a lot of women, is that we just add. We do all that we're already doing, plus we add the job without adjusting. You just need to be okay with the fact and positive and about the fact that you are a mother. And that changes what you working at that place looks like. And if you're not okay with it, then we're going to need to find a different job. And this is the reality of it. Like, I'm just saying you're going to burn out so you can try it because maybe you are a superhero, <laughs> um, but you will, and you'll be frustrated and you'll get bitter, uh, probably mostly with your spouse <laughs> because you're like doing everything plus working full time. And you know, uh, you start to get angry with your children. You're starting to be the person you don't want to be. No, 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 no. We're going back to work because we have ambitions or goals in our life or things that we just really enjoy doing and you should, but it doesn't need to be at the expense of what you value as a woman and as a mother. And number five, don't settle. Don't settle. Don't settle for a job that you don't really want just because it's, you know, it's, yeah, it works within my schedule and I can do this, you know, and if you want to do it, then that's fine. But like, don't settle. Like so many women just take a much lower paying job or, you know, lower level job because they feel like they've been out of it. They feel like they've missed, they can't keep up with technology. They don't know what's going, no, 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 no. The skills that you have learned, technology, computer systems, they, you know, you can learn that in an afternoon or in a couple days. The skills that you have fine tuned as a mother over the last five to 10 years, is it gives you a huge advantage over anybody that has it. Huge advantage. And so that's how you need to look at it. So don't go for a lesser paying job. If you're a lawyer, don't become a, you know, an admin person, okay? Go for what it is and be very clear on this is what I can accomplish because here's the reality. Here's the reality is that women and mothers are used to working within everybody's expectations, everybody's time frame, And so you know how to get the job done in a much faster, more efficient way than probably anybody else has ever done it. <laughs> okay. And so the job will get done. The employer does not need to worry. The job will get done and it'll get done very quickly and efficiently. And it doesn't need to be nine to five. Okay, because like I said, I could probably get all of my tasks done by 10 a.m., you know, because I don't, I'm not being interrupted. And it's just, you finally have time for your brain to think and all of a sudden. And so, because you're so used to, as a mom, all the stimulus all the time, you can do things very quickly and you've just learned how to do that. And so don't settle for a lower paying job or a less prestigious job. Just go for what you need. I hope that if you're a new mom that and you're heading back into the workforce that you had some encouragement, some motivation, some, some insight on how to jump back into the marketplace, please share your stories below. I would love to hear about anything that uh, you've overcome or things that you've learned because of course I don't know everything and everybody's experience. And so I would love to hear your stories, like what has been your struggles and what, um, you know, would you have liked to have done going back into the workforce five years ago? Like what have you learned? through the process and any encouragement you could give to new moms heading back uh, into the workforce. I would love to hear it. Anyway, click the subscribe button, hit the bell for the reminder for a video that comes out every week for my channel. Have a great week.